remember do you remember your um course well do you remember your defining story the one the, the one story that really got to you and made you realize or decide that this this is where I want to stay or this is what I want to do um that, that moment remains the experience you know I was walking on the road minding my own business and out of nowhere an angry woman just you know starts cussing about the PPP and then she just points her finger to me and says it's all your fault mm. I'm looking at her and I'm like what why do you think I am PPP and I went home, I thought about it, and then I said, listen, this woman thinks I'm PPP because of what I look like. And the more I thought about that, and the more I deconstructed her behavior, the angrier I became. The angrier I became. And I wasn't angry with that woman. I was angry at a political system. And that is what really got me started. You're writing these days. How has it, how has it changed, or how do you... How do you see it evolving or changing? Well, my writing these days, uh, it well, the content has changed. Mm. Um, I recently uh, wrote a series of articles that were, they basically dealt with, with everyday subject matters, you know? Mm. I, I was writing about being home. I was writing about moving. I was just trying to connect with Guyanese people on a very, very basic level. Just, I was trying to stay out of the politics for a bit. I mean, it's not healthy for you to wake up every day and just read politics. Nobody should do that. I took a year off. People should take time off reading politics. Um, but more recently, I've, I've, I've been moved by um, a personal matter that occurred the other day. So I wrote about it. And um, how my writing style has shifted now is that I... I go to the, you know, I, I go to, through so much trouble. I take all the pains that I possibly can to ensure that it's objective, you know. And I mean, my writing has always been objective, but now I just measure it and I refine it. And my tone is going to be super reasonable. And the writing itself is very simple because I think it's a waste of writing if somebody reads it and they don't understand it. Mm -hmm. so. Sarah, okay. Yeah. Two years ago, three years ago, a year ago, there are people who have ex been exposed to you, exposed to your writing, and they have a certain perception, right or wrong, about Sarah Barrett, this wonderful, brilliant, young Guyanese person, woman, who's an activist who writes very well. How would you like to describe Sarah Barrett? today how would you like um, them to go ahead today you know um, i think that's one of the hardest questions you can ask anybody how would you like to that describe is, yourself that because is very true it's an unfair question I, but let, yeah, let, <laughs> go am, ahead go ahead Sarah. Attempt, um i am i am gonna attempt it um how I would describe myself um, now is more at peace mm. and de definitely not, not, not as angry as I used to be. You know, I used to be so angry and I spent a lot of time managing that anger. I, I would sit down for hours just rationalizing things and letting the, the anger just leak out because I would never ever write when I was angry. I would never let myself write when I was angry. So I, I invested a lot of time in, in, into anger management, but now here I am. And I'm, 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 I'm a calmer person and I'm so much more, I'm at peace now. I don't even have to wake up at four o'clock in the morning and, and look at the sunrise anymore <laughs> to be at peace. I can just roll up to my bed at nine o'clock in the morning and whoops, there it is. Just... Sarah, for that curious, or those curious young minds listening to this program, listening to you, and wondering, how did she do that? How did she change her temperature? How did she become calm and accepting um, of, of, well, let me not put words into your mouth, but how did she become so calm and, you know, not so angry anymore? And how, how did she manage to shift 
into this, you know, calmer person that we are seeing today? Um, that's very, very, very difficult to do, Selwyn. And um, <laughs> it, it takes a long time. But this is we. This is what I did. Um, I confronted the truth. It was a truth that I knew all along, but I was unwilling to confront it because I was afraid that if I confronted um, that truth, it would mean that I wouldn't be able to solve it in my lifetime and that I would have to die without solving the problem. And I was unwilling to believe that, you know, it, it was, it was such a, a big problem that would take several lifetimes to fix. And then I realized that it took several centuries to make the problem this big. So it's okay if it takes a couple of lifetimes to get it just right. So the answer is confronting the truth, accepting that truth. I want Once to you accept that truth, uh -huh. and you accept you're up again. This journey. I want to shift to business matters. What is your occupation these days, and, and, and how did you get involved in what you do? All right, so these days, you know, I when people ask me what I do for work, I said I'm a writer. That's all I, I, I've ever done. That's what I still do. But um, currently, I am editing a women's magazine. The magazine is called Lady, and it's published um, for the Lady organization, a registered NGO by a company called Inspire Inc. And uh, I got involved with Inspire Inc. because uh, last May, re I, I really was at a difficult place in my life and I was job hunting, job hunting, job hunting. And then along comes the person who owns Inspire and, and you know, they say, hey, I've, I've basically, I've, I've seen some of your writings and so on. That's how we connected. And then I sent a resume and they said, well, listen, we've got this publication and perhaps it's something you may like to join. Yeah, so, I mean, yeah, so, I mean, what, that's it. So. <laughs> what is it about this magazine that really appeals to you? What is it about this magazine that... Really appeals to you? <laughs> I'm not getting a lot of far, clearly. What is it about a magazine that really appeals to you? Oh, um, oh my, I hope my boss is not listening to this. So the first time I saw the magazine, I loved the quality of it. I mean, the physical publication, it, it was it's excellent quality. However, when I went through the content, I, I was a bit sad. I, you know, I had my, I'm a very opinionated female selling. Mm -hmm. So I had my own opinions about the content of the magazine. And I thought, well, listen, I would love a chance to build this brand and to make it do something spectacular. And that is how I approach anything. So my need to build is, is what you know, basically got me landed as the editor of the publication. And I haven't regretted it one day. Well, con congratulations. Is there a particular vision you have for this magazine? Uh, yes, yes, there is, there is a vision. But the vision isn't just for the magazine. It's for the NGO, the lady organization. Mm -hmm. Now, the managing director of Inspire Inc. is a woman, Anita Mahadeo. And uh, what Ms. Mahadeo hopes that lady organization can do is become an umbrella organization of sorts. We've got a lot of women groups, a lot of women organizations who are doing spectacular work across the country mm -hmm. in the Caribbean region. Um, however, what we don't have is, we don't have a sort of umbrella organization that, um, you know, creates, that coordinates um, activities where all of these, you know, women groups and NGOs can, um, can interact with each other, can share their experiences, can learn from each other that, but well, listen, we've tried this, it hasn't worked, and to just make that process easier. So I'm, I'm hoping that the lady organization can more or less be the links that are going to interlink. I, I hope lady can 
can handle the links and, and create that, that interconnection, you know, create a network, a family. I believe that when groups are aware of what other groups are doing and all efforts are centered at the same same place or if all efforts you know are distributed across a wider space with help from each other then we're, we're going to get somewhere way better we're going to be able to solve far more issues that affect women in a more effective way let's take a quick break sarah but when we get back i want you to answer me a question about the magazine um how how is no, no, me it yet no i don't want to think about it Okay. Well, well, let, let me let me let yeah. me ask it to you before, and then we'll take a break. Um, how is how is your vision unfolding, and um, what sort of articles do you guys usually fo uh, focus on? All right. So, the type of articles um, that we usually focus on are supposed to be articles that ultimately empower women mm. and explore their unique experience. That, that experience that's unique, unique to Guyana and perhaps the wider Caribbean setting. Because I, I, I think, you know, women across the globe, our social context will obviously determine most of the experiences we have. So I try to, I've tried to capture that, that in as much as I can. I've actually only edited uh, one issue since, since I got there in May, and that's the current issue that's out. And the lead story is beyond Granger. It's an interview that I did with the first lady, Sandra Granger. And what I wanted to do is this. I wanted to show the, the world who Sandra Granger, you know, is beyond the title of first lady. I didn't want her to be confined by or defined by a name or a title. I wanted to show people how much more she was beyond this. And that is, that is my vision for the magazine. Anything we carry, and, and, and we're not limited to a specific type of content per se, but the content that we do carry not only must it empower and inspire women, but it has to show you the story behind the story. And so I, we're not giving shallow looks. And, 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 and then just, I'm going to break my own rule here. One, one last quick question on that, on that particular topic. Are these only women, Guyanese women, who are actually living in Guyana, or they can be women in the diaspora? Well, we we're not limited. I mean, so far we've, we've mostly concentrated on Guyanese women living locally. But yes, I mean, we definitely want to look at Guyanese women. Thank you, Sarah. Let's take In a break. Uh, something I, I definitely want to explore. Yeah, our sure. All right. <laughs> 